because you all hear me well, I'm sure. I just bought this camera and it's very important for me because um, no matter how many of you are here right now, <clears throat> thank God and thank to uh, uh, modern technology and internet, uh, everybody can see us and hear us all over the world. And um, so um, there was a friend of mine, Serbian, uh, who um, used to live in Germany for um, many years. Um, he, um, he was not uh, some extreme churchgoer. Uh, he was, uh, if somebody would ask him on the street uh, what faith you are, uh, what religion do you practice, he would say, yeah, I'm also Christian, like many of us. But uh, actually he was not really uh, active. And uh, since uh, we just uh, call ourselves Orthodox Christians and we are not active in it, that means that we do not gather the, um, uh, all the benefit that comes from, from our uh, Orthodox Christian, from our faith, which is the only one that really comes back to the uh, roots of the Christianity, uh, which means that uh, we have this salt that came on the earth with uh, our God Jesus Christ, Son of God, and that he gave this salt to the apostles and then to uh, holy martyrs, and uh, by the blood of the holy martyrs the church was built all over, and no matter how many uh, of those first Christians were killed, and slaughtered and then tortured and uh, their, 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 their joints were severed but they um, actually every, every, every um, drop of their blood was the seed of the new church and uh, it's not just like that, that on the altar table we are putting a small piece of uh, holy relics of those um, giants of faith so, um, um, in the first three centuries um, before the Christianity became a regular official uh, church of, of the Roman Empire, Empire um, first Christians were living, uh, being aware that they could be killed and they could be slaughtered every day or every night. So, uh, during that kind of life condition, uh, they were completely with the Lord in their hearts, in their minds, in their, in their mouth. And uh, so when you are in this way, close to the Lord, He is close to you. And not only close to you, but He is in you. He dwells in you. And, and like, like uh, Holy Apostle Paul says, uh, it's not me that lives anymore, but Christ will lives in, in myself. And uh, so in those three, first three centuries, um, they could really be called, they could have really been called uh, 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 holies, saints. And we, we know when we read the, the epistles of the Holy Apostle, especially Apostle Paul, he says, uh, when he greets some of them, and he says, and, uh, and, and, and say, say hello, greet, all those uh, uh, saints, holies. I'm not sure how, how I can say this in, in, in English, but they say, uh, uh, say hello to all those who are holy. And what does it mean? It means that they were carrying the, the, the Holy Spirit, so they were holy. And uh, it's a question, are we uh, carrying, uh, are, we, are we holders of the, of the Holy Spirit? And are we holy? Or we are just nominal? We're just uh, Christians uh, by the name. And this friend of mine, um, Mitya Babic, he used to live in, in Germany, in, uh, in Munich. He was nominal Christian. He uh, went to church for Christmas and, and Easter. Uh, and he was celebrating Slava. This is the um, only uh, Serbian uh, way of only certain Serbian churches have this Slav 
Uh, some some of churches some churches are kind of surprised. What does it mean, Slavic? You know, you are you are um, uh, cutting a, a, a bread, and especially Greeks who are very si serious with, with, with religion and faith, and they are protectors of the orthodoxy. We have to admit this. Uh, they are sometimes even scandalized. You know, what what do they did this search for? What are they doing? You know, they have this slav and they are. Uh, offering, yeah, they're, they're offering, they're offering this this bread. But we actually, we actually, we have already offered a bread on the, on the Holy Eucharist. Uh, why is that? And very, very, very often I was thinking about this law. Why not, not, not any other Orthodox Christian church does this? But then I realized why is this? Because the Assyrian people is it's pretty wild. People. Uh, um, undisciplined and, and very, very uh, free in their mind, but sometimes they can go into the, uh, uh, you know, um, a little bit uh, further on the red line. You know. So this uh, Slava helped us to, 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 to uh, put us together, to um, hold us to the church. And of course, sometimes it's not good. Sometimes, you know, Slava becomes uh, more important than liturgy, which is extremely uh, uh, wrong. So Mishabovich was one of them. Nice, good man, you know, he was not a criminal, he was not a whatever, but he was not a churchgoer. And uh, once happened that uh, he had some problems with his uh, stomach, actually uh, abdomen. He went to the doctor, he had some blood in, uh, in the, uh, how do you say, uh, in the, uh, in the toilet bowl, the toilet bowl. So he went to the doctor and they said, uh, sir, you have a cancer. Uh, colon. Colon, yeah, colon, of course. Uh, and sure, like everybody else, uh, he, he was uh, struck. This information and the uh, whole of his life uh, uh, turned upside down. And uh, as it usually happens in these moments, he started to think about his life, to think uh, where he was, what was he doing, what happened, uh, what to do now. Uh, and uh, he went to, uh, to surgery, they cut off one part of the colon. So he was fine for a while, but then, as it usually goes, he, they found on his liver the uh, metastasis, how do you call it? So, yeah. yeah. And that was, uh, that was another shock, because he thought uh, he's not healed, he's well. Unfortunately, in the world that we live, which is extremely poisoned and contaminated, uh, today, cancer is something common, usual, unfortunately, especially in, in our country, which was bombed by uh, this uranium. Now we have an uh, extremely high number of uh, parents that they cannot have children, they are barren, uh, and we have an uh, extreme high number of cancers, much more than uh, in the rest of the world. Um, so, uh, and he had a, a small, small, small daughter, so the whole thing was uh, tragic. And uh, there was a friend of his uh, back in Bosnia, from the same uh, town, and he was uh, watching uh, some monk, Arsenia, and his lectures. And he found something in those lectures, and he realized that this monk speaks in another uh, style than uh, many other members of the church. He is very open. He is very honest. He he very often uh, opens up his life, his his youth, and talks very honestly about his uh, his uh, sins, about sex and drugs and rock and roll that he used to live. First in Belgrade, then in New York City. And uh, since he knew that 
his friend, Mitya Babic from Munich, got very sick. He called him and he said, well, try, try to listen to this monk. Maybe you, you can uh, find some, some benefit out there. And so he really obeyed. I mean, he, uh, he did uh, what, he, uh, what his friend suggested him. So he started to listen uh, to uh, lectures of this monk Arsenian. And a uh, very strange thing happened. Uh, during the, uh, those sessions, he started to feel bad. He doesn't know, he didn't know how. In the beginning, he thought it's maybe uh, all a suggestion, you know, some kind of uh, euphoria. But then, he definitely started to feel better and better, and he went to a uh, new screening, and they told them uh, in, the, in the hospital, and like, sir, what did you do? I mean, uh, how do you live? What happened with you? I mean, your liver, he had 23. Uh, little um, spots in his liver that they are enlarging every day. But uh, happened that those uh, spots were uh, reducing their size, and not only size, but in number as well. And uh, since it doesn't really happen very often, they started to ask him, what do you do, what do you do, what do you do? And he said, what? I mean, I'm not doing nothing, I'm just... Uh, using the therapy, you know, and they said, yeah, but there might be something else, you know, everybody else is using this therapy, but nothing happens. Uh, and then, of course, he knew what was going on, in a way, and then he, he became more aware of what's going on. So he started to listen more of those uh, lectures, and uh, the, uh, the grace of the Holy Spirit, God's grace, came upon him, and he was really filled with this. And uh, wondrously, he started to get better and better. So when he realized, he uh, asked his friend to give him the, my number, because that was me, this monk of Samuel. So he called me and he said, uh, I have to meet you, I, I have to talk to you. And at that time I used to live in um, a monastery called Ostrog in Montenegro which is known for, which is famous for, for many healings, especially for mental diseases, but as well for, for, for bodily problems. And uh, we came in touch and he told me, I have to come and, in fact, I have to touch you. <laughs> I said, no, 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 if you want to come and touch me, don't come. <laughs> but if you want to come and touch the holy relics of St. Basil of Ostrog, please do it. He said, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I said, okay, but be, be precise. So he came, we met, uh, and he told me uh, already at that moment, he was only with four uh, these uh, cancer spots on his liver. Only four and very small, from 23 to four. And uh, so we started to talk and he told me, I have never been more joyous, joyous in my life. He, he was saying, this is such a joyful part of my life that this is, this is a little bit insane. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm sick of cancer and I'm in such a high degree of joy. Father, please tell me what is this? Am I going crazy? Or this is something more deeper than that? And, and I told him, my brother Mitchell, that means that uh, you're really a uh, in the embrace, embrace, you're embraced, uh, you're in, 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 uh, on, on, on the bosom, bosom, how is it, bosom? Bosom of, of, of the very Lord. And it, it means that uh, somehow he, he had decided to help you and to heal you. So, uh, and from that moment on, he started to go into certain kind of delusion. I was trying all the time to tell him not to go this way, not to go this way, not to think this way. He started to idolize myself. You know, he started to uh, think that uh, uh, I'm holy or something. You know, that this this power comes from me. And from that very moment, I realized that he's in great danger. 
because he switched the whole the, 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 the topic of the, of the whole thing. And I was telling him, remember, if you ever say once again uh, that that comes from me, forget about me. Never come to see me again, don't talk to me. Do whatever you want. I'm telling you, it's not coming from me, it's from the Lord. Okay, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about the grace, I'm talking about life, God, Jesus Christ, Christianity, everything. And that's why, through these words, through this uh, monitor of your, of your computer, you were um, touched like this, and you, you felt the, 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 the most powerful uh, power of the Holy Spirit. But remember, it comes from the Lord, not from me. I'm just a medium. I'm just, you know, like, like in Old Testament, we know that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Lord would open the jaws of, of the donkey. You know? So I'm in, this, in this case, I'm just a donkey that can talk about the Lord. Because Lord can open mouth and to the lion and to the... anyway. He said, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I know, but it's somewhere. So uh, he went back home and he called me back a uh, month after that and he said, how the guess what happened? He went back to this hospital and they screened him. I mean, he came to the, uh, this um, uh, electromagnetic resonance, I recall this in Indonesia. Yeah. And uh, he was clean, no cancer anymore, no any spot. And all those doctors were absolutely astonished. They didn't know what's going on. So they called him. There was a consilium of, of the doctors, and they were asking, "What did he uh, do? I mean, in terms of uh, in order to, to help others?" And he was saying, "Nothing. I was just uh, listening to certain uh, sermons of, of a certain monk from Serbia." And, uh, well, let's say I started to, to pray and to go to the church. And they said, ah, okay, don't tell me, don't, don't give me that, but tell me really what, what were you doing. So he realized that they, they cannot grasp it, they cannot just uh, realize all what was here. So he quickly went to, 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 um, to the hospital, and uh, we were in contact. He was coming back again. And, uh, of course, I gave him prayer room, uh, which was, I, I told him, now, Lord, heal you. Now, you're a healthy man. Everybody is astonished, but I'm not. I know what happens. But now, you have to be extremely cautious what are you going to do in future. First of all, you have to be, you have to give um, uh, gratitude, uh, thankfulness to the Lord, how? It's not abstract notion. You have to do it uh, um, actively. First of all, you have to go through liturgical cycles, which is which consists of four points: uh, confession, fasting, liturgy every Sunday, and taking communion as often as the priest uh, gives you uh, the uh, blessing. On the other side, on the other hand, there is a. It's like a two. Two wings, you know, bird cannot fly with one wing, with two wings. One wing is the liturgical cycles, another wing is, 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 is holy uh, Saint uh, Gregory of the Palamas, the saying, and another wing, also important, private prayer rule. And the most important part of that private prayer rule is mental prayer called the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on the sinner. It's for everybody. Holy, Holy Gregory of the Palmas was saying, it's not only for monks, it's for everybody. Okay, monks are doing this more, but it's for every civilian, for every layman. I told him that, and I, I gave him a prayer roll, which was not mm, small. It was, let's say, 45 minutes in the morning, a little bit more than in, in the evening, but it was not too big as well, because in, 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 in the world that we live, extremely full of sin, and evil, it's nothing, we need more. You know, when somebody tells you, oh, you don't have to pray that much, oh, just say, our oh, Father, that's enough. It's not enough. We are all sick, we are in the sick world. We need a lot of remedies. And the only 
to remedy is liturgy and prayer at home. Uh, and this prayer rule that I give usually consists of uh, metanoias, uh, prostrations. First we do prostrations, I don't give too much prostrations. Between 5 and 10, there are people who are doing 200, 300 monks on, on, on Holy Mountain uh, do uh, usually 300 prostrations a day. Of course, we can, all the rest of the not. Then there are morning, morning prayers from, from the prayer, prayer book. Also, Christian prayer book, then two chapters from the uh, New Testament, and 100 uh, knots on the prayer rope of Jesus' prayer. Altogether, it depends how fast we read, but it's not it's not point that we read fast to finish it as soon as possible. But just simply, somebody reads slower, somebody reads faster. Then it all takes about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. In the evening, very similar. Five until to uh, ten prostrations, evening prayers, one katis, katisma, uh, which means, I don't know in English, it's called katisma, it is. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a one chapter. Let's, let's, let's imagine that the uh, David Psalms are divided on 20 chapters. And in Greek, this chapter is called katisma. So one katisma consists of seven or eight psalms. And then again, uh, 100 uh, uh, Jesus prayers. And he said, Oh, beautifully, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. Then, uh, once, I went, uh, once I went to Munich to give uh, a presentation, and I went to his room and I saw that he, when he's little, there was a, his little, let's call it uh, iconostasis, with, with prayer book and, and, and the Holy Gospel, it was there, but it looks like it's like an like a, like a, like a, like a ornament that he never touches it. And of course, I notice this. I notice these things. I see when, 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 when the prayer rope is, is greasy. I see when the, when, the, when the prayer book is greasy and it's not that bright, brand new, you know? That means that you are practicing, you're using it, you're, you're touching it, it's, it's, it's part of your, 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 your being. And I didn't like that. I said, do you do, do, do your prayer? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Do you go to the church? Oh, yeah, I go to the church. Do you take communion? Yeah, whenever I can. Then he came back again to um, Ostrog, and I went to his room, and I saw only a prayer book. I said, where is your Psalter? Where is your... New Testament. Oh, I, I, I forgot it at home. I said, what are you talking about? I mean, how come you can forget this? I mean, it's like you forget to eat or you forget your toothbrush. I mean, it's, it's, it, it should be part of you. Well, yeah, I know. Forgive me. I said, I don't have to forgive you anything. I mean, uh, let's God forgive you. <coughs> Unfortunately, things were going the wrong way. He didn't, he didn't uh, listen to me. Uh, he didn't obey me. Then there was a, a Lenten period, I don't remember which one. I think uh, St. Peter, St. Peter, St. Paul. He went to Serbia. We, we talked again. He said, well, I, I couldn't keep the fast. You know, my aunt, she was cooking. We are with me. I said, what are you talking about? My aunt was cooking with me. What does it mean? Finally, he called me. Yeah, uh, and um, um, there was also a Serbian doctor who, uh, who who is also living in Munich, and he was his parallel doctor. He was also going to him, and they were all astonished, as I, as I, as I said in the beginning, because he became completely uh, sound and, and healthy, and uh, so they. First of all, the people from the regular hospital, Germans, they said, we have to know what we're doing. And then this doctor as well, he said, we have to write a book or something. We have to record this. It is a miracle. And at that time, I had a little um, a TV show, a video video show in, um, in, in my in, in monastery of Oster. We had a small TV studio. And uh, he said, I would really like to uh, 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 participate in one, in one of your shows. It was like a regular uh, interview. 
like a host and guest. And they said, okay, but why, 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 why hurry? You know? I mean, why, why I should be um, hurry? Let's let's wait for. Them. And his doctor was, no, no, it's beautiful, it's it's a miracle. Let's do it. He said, okay, let's do it. You know, I mean, because really all the results were absolutely clean. So we did this. It was very, very, very good. Uh, it, was, it went all over the world, and I had many, many calls after that. Oh, beautiful, great! It, it was so powerful. Really, somebody that got healed, you know, just just from prayer. And uh, and then what happened? One day he was calling me. I was uh, at that at that time. It was summer, and I went to retreat to my um, to my hermitage because before monastery was I used to live for five years in the hermitage in Kelia, in uh, up in the mountains. It's just tri it's it's a very triangle of uh, Serbia, Montenegro, and Kosovo. Although it used to be all Serbia, but unfortunately it's not anymore. Uh, it's a Serbian country, Serbian land, Serbian people, but it's another story. And uh, there I used to live uh, for five years, and uh, I got sick. I couldn't stay there anymore. But I used to go there every summer for a month to uh, recover and to get to charge, to charge spiritual power, to go back to Oslo and to work with people. Because I had a blessing, although I'm not, in, uh, I'm not ordained, I'm not a monk priest, I'm just a single monk. But the uh, bishop, the metropolitan, uh, he gave me a blessing to, to receive people and, uh, of course, not to confess them uh, regularly, but to heal them, but to talk to them and to, uh, to, to help them. In, in, in life, and um, they call this their life coach. <laughs> uh, and uh, that summer I went as usual up there, but I had to have my phone uh, on. Uh, Mitchell Abit Kabish called me, he said, Father Senna, this is Mitchell. I said, oh, Mitchell, nice to hear you. Usually I wouldn't, I wouldn't answer to anybody else, but to him I didn't really have to because the whole thing was so uh, intense. And he started to cry, to weep bitterly. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, father came back. Came back to me. I said, how come? What happened? It was just a few weeks ago. I mean, not a few months, but a month ago that And he said, no, it came back. Liver has, again, about five. Hot spots. Hot spots, yeah. Hot spots, yes. I said, but, and I already felt in myself that something was wrong. I said, yeah, but how did you live? And he said, Father, I had to admit, I had to confess. I lied to you all those months. I never, I, 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 didn't, I didn't do anything that you suggested to me. I didn't pray, I didn't go to liturgy. In six months he took only one communion, and it was a big feast. I didn't fast, and I deserved it. I said, oh, you, 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 you dumb head. I was so, uh, so, so, so embittered and, and so disappointed and so, so struck and uh, so sad. And he said, but why? Why you didn't listen to me? Why you didn't listen to the Lord? You, you, you disappointed the Lord and you see what happened to you. And he said, yeah, yeah, what can I do? But now, now I have, yeah, yeah, again, I have to go to the chemotherapy and I have to, 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 to the uh, x-rays. And then, no, I said, no. Not anymore. Now you have to give complete sacrifice. You have to. This is your last chance. Don't go to doctors anymore. You saw what what the Lord did to you. Everything is possible. Don't go to chemotherapy anymore. Don't go to to, to X-ray. Stay at home at your home now. You have to absolutely obey us. Obey my, my my rule. Go to the church. But he was not strong enough. He went to chemotherapy, and of course, chemotherapy kills. It's, it's just it's just dying even 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 more uh, in, in, in absolutely exhausted state of state of health. So he didn't listen to me, and he was 
getting weaker and weaker and weaker and, and, and more pain and more uh, everything that goes together with, 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 uh, with that cancer. And I was really, it was one of, of, the, one of, one of the worst parts of my life, especially because we did this video show and I was, I was, I was regretting, why, did, why didn't we wait for that? I, it was made in rush. And uh, so I didn't call him for a while, he didn't call me. I just didn't know what to tell him anymore. I was extremely sad. But then one day he called me and he said, you know, Father, I didn't sleep for one month. I lost 25 kilos. But you know what? Finally, I just, I, I obeyed you. Yeah. And you know what? I'm not crying anymore. I'm not desperate anymore. Now I'm healed. Now I'm finally healed in my life. Of course, I'm healed spiritually. But I'm dying. I know that. And I'm, I'm not afraid. And I'm, I'm not crying for this world. And I'm, I'm not crying for my, for my child. Or for blue sky or for uh, anything. Because I'm happy. Finally, for the first time in my life, I feel happiness, I feel joy, I feel deep meaning of my life. Because, thank you, you helped me to uh, become healthy and sound and healed, but spiritually. My spirit and my soul finally got healed. But I'm dying. No big deal. And uh, as much as this previous period was tragic to me, this one was like maybe one of the best best periods in my life. Because I saw, I realized that I helped uh, a man. I helped, I helped uh, a, a, a soul to find salvation. Through me, who are nothing, God helped one person. And he died. He died. And, uh, but it was, uh, it was joy, joyful in And And uh, so, uh, this is the story of Mitch Lovich, one part of my life. And uh, when I was a young man uh, back in Serbia, ex Yugoslavia. I was living there like uh, many other young people. Although not like many of them, but some of them who are really extreme in this religion of this world, which is called sex and drugs and rock and roll. Uh, we were contaminated with the uh, Western style of life because the side was open, it was soft communism. We could get in contact with all these uh, rock bands and uh, way of life. And we were longing, and we were so sad that we were not born in England or in America or France. We were so uh, deeply unsatisfied and unhappy. And of course, we were waiting to get old enough and just to fly away. In the meantime, um, we were growing up, we were gifted for music. We were starting to uh, make our rock bands. Uh, we were talented for music, for, 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 for poems, for, uh, for um, scenery, for art, for everything, for theater. So it was a, it was a, 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 a circle of young, young, young people uh, in Belgrade who were Avant-garde, in a way. But since we didn't have uh, orthodoxy, since, since we didn't have original Christianity, as a matter of fact, we didn't have any Christianity. Although there was some Roman Catholicism, but it was um, it was just deteriorated uh, Christianity, unfortunately. Uh, we. Uh, 
oriented our minds and our young hearts, of course, a man uh, need, needs uh, consolation. And uh, since he doesn't have real, proper consolation, he turns towards wrong, false consolations. And um, since the end of 19th century, the beginning of 20th century, uh, the uh, Far East religions and philosophy came to the Europe. Uh, basically, finally, when the Europeans, Western Europeans, kicked out the Jesus out of, out of Western Europe, and since they couldn't live with the spiritual fulfillment, they uh, uh, turned towards um, Far East meditation, yoga, and Buddhism, and things, things like this. Well, I was one of them. Because from the very beginning, I was, I was thinking there must be something, of course, drugs were there regularly. Thank God, not heavy drugs. I mean, not deadly drugs. Because uh, ma marijuana, at that time we didn't have uh, cannabis, we had only a hash, hashish. Uh, so cannabis is a heavy drug. So it's an it's, uh, 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 extreme lie when they say today it's a, it's a light drug. No, it's an extremely heavy drug. A light drug is coffee, which means coffee, green, and black tea. And that South American tea, which is called mata. This is light drug. Heavy drug is cannabis, hash, of course. Uh, and deadly drugs are cocaine and heroin. So I'm not going to talk about all this variety of drugs that came these days I and mean, this craziness that I'm going to go in. But, so we were taking uh, these drugs, and uh, but I was always thinking there must be there must be something else to make me happy, to make me fulfilled, except drugs. So I realized maybe that's the, maybe yoga, meditation. You know, you sit there, you repeat your mantra, and you go to astral projection, you go to the stars. And and now you reach Nirvana and blah blah blah. So I was practicing uh, transcendental meditation, TM. John Lennon brought it here from with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi in the 60s, I believe. Our beloved Beatles. You know. So slowly with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, TM came into the, to, the, to, to Europe and started to contaminate it. Extremely, extremely bad way. And uh, practicing TM is extremely dangerous. It's, um, uh, you're losing your personality. Depersonalization. Depersonalization. Uh, you are going to the uh, non-being. The Lord brought us from non-being into being. And the whole of Far East actually wants to go back to the non-being. I, I understand them in a way because as any other members of humanity on this planet, they realize that the uh, human being is suffering in this, in this life. But unfortunately they didn't realize that there is a father, there is a creator of this universe who is personality, who is not uh, energy, unified fields or whatever, it's a personality. It's, uh, emotional, omnipotent personality. Good. That, that wants only good for us. Unfortunately, they didn't know that. So, any other, the, the only way what to do is to go to, 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 to escape this world, this life, this personality, and to ex distinguish, extinguish your mind, your, your thinking, your everything. And even love is not, is not uh, productive for them because it brings you back to, to the being. They have compassion for the, for the creative world, but they, they do not have love. Because love for them is counterproductive. counterproductive. So they do not have love. They, they are lying if they, they say they are love. They are not lying. Today there is a soft Buddhism which is saying, oh, you sit there, you know, it's good. No, real Buddhism is actually killing. It's, it's, it's a spiritual suicide. But complete one, going back into non-being, unfortunately. 
You cannot go to Mount Lake. You go to hell. So uh, I was practicing TM for seven and a half years. And I was sinking deeper and deeper into the passions, especially into the uh, 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 sexual passion, uh, lust. Whenever I would practice, I had an extreme need for masturbation or to go to find somebody to have sex. In the beginning, it was not like that. In the beginning, it was all beautiful, nirvana, everything is so cool, everything is so serene. But then, as the years were going by, I, I realized that I was sinking deep into, into drugs and into sex, into this fornication. I, I lost a big part of my English, but I, I believe you understand me. And uh, so uh, we have decided this, this terrible war that happened in ex Yugoslavia was approaching. Everybody who had uh, just a little bit of brains, he could realize that something like this, like this would happen. We had enough brains to realize that it's all, all going to go to, to, to hell. Everything is going to burn. So we all decided to uh, flee, to leave the boat for sinking like rats. Uh, now I think maybe I should have stayed and fight. Maybe I was a deserter. Maybe I was a, I was a coward. Or I was just a, I was just a young man without any meaning of life to protect. Maybe to be killed, but to stay there. I was not. I didn't. Anyway, so we all uh, flew away from Yugoslavia. One part of our company, which was big, I'm talking about basically about, about Belgrade. Uh, one part went to uh, United States, and another half went to Europe, uh, mostly London, Paris, Berlin, Barcelona, something like this. And another part, which I was a part of, we went to the uh, east and west coast uh, United States of America. Since I was as, as, as a young man, when I was 19, uh, for the first time in my life I went to America because I was fascinated with America. You know, like, like a little uh, stupid kid, uh, imagining this American dream. Actually, it turned out to be an American nightmare. But in those, in those years, I, I, was, I, couldn't, I couldn't realize that. So I went there for the second time with, with the best friend of mine called uh, Dushan. Called, he was, his nickname, nickname was Gera. Uh, 1980. The, the very next year uh, we went together. I was telling him how I was in New York. I was in because I went to San Francisco. I said, oh, I have to go with you because we were very close. Uh, he was an extremely good artist, he was a painter, he was extremely good, he, he could draw whatever he sees, he was an extremely talented person. Um, so we went, we went to, to, to New York again, 1980, and then we have this, decided to go together again in uh, 1987, and it was for good. I finished my university, I, was, I studied dentistry, he studied interior architecture, so we went to New York, and uh, we continued to take drugs. Unfortunately, my friend Gary was uh, already hooked on heroin, not to needle, but same, same garbage, uh, sniffing. I was extremely unhappy because of that. I was extremely unhappy because I was, I was smoking cannabis. I realized that I'm already hooked on it. I cannot be without it anymore. I cannot. I cannot stop meditating as well. And in the beginning, it was really a, a, a divine feeling when I, you know, smoke pot, when I smoke cannabis, you know, I would go to. But then, as, as years goes by, then it becomes just paranoia. You know, you have to smoke. You cannot be without, be, be, be not, not stoned. But when you get stoned, then you get paranoid. You get paranoid. Everybody's against you, you feel fear, you feel terrible, you feel, you know, there's a police, there's this, there's that, there's this one, everybody's against me. 
So, and sometimes it goes to psychosis. It's, it's really terrible. So I was unhappy because of me and extremely because of, uh, I was unhappy because of him. And uh, so we were slowly, slowly dying, dying spiritually. And he was dying as well as physically. Myself not. Uh, but it's much easier and much better to die physically than spiritually. And this whole circle of our friends were extremely talented persons. They were musicians, painters, artists, uh, actors, uh, doctors, engineers. Uh, we were all dying out of hunger for Holy Spirit. Out of hunger for living God. We used to have every literature from all over the world, every religion, every philosophy, every spiritual practice. The uh, bookstores were extremely well equipped, but no more to Christianity. And, accidentally or not, but nothing, nothing was accidental in, in life, I came across with a, a person, a young man, my age, in New York City, in one big party, there was a big party, or party, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, there, was a, there was an Irish man who came to Dutchman and he told me, where did you get that Yankee accent? <laughs> it was good to me, I had a Yankee, Yankee accent. Uh, and this, this young man was, uh, in those years, for me, a straight person. Straight. He wasn't cool, he wasn't in, he wasn't freak. But some special light was around his head. Something was so nice and beautiful around him. And then, in the, in, this is the, in the, these were the last months of my existence in this life. I was already thinking about suicide. Uh, we uh, acquainted, we, we, uh, became, we, we became friends. And to make this uh, story short, we had to go home. Uh, he uh, introduced me to the Orthodox Christianity. I was baptized as a kid, but nothing else. And uh, I started to practice. He gave me some books, and I said, okay, I have nothing to lose. I can kill myself anytime, any day. And it was my option. You know, I said to myself, nobody asked me if I want to come into this being. Nobody asked me if I want to be born. I do not feel well here. This life is terrible. There is no love, there is no friendship. Only you are you're only good if you can be used, materially, physically, or spiritually. No love, no real friendship. I refuse to live in this world. So I have this right to kill myself. So I said, okay, let's try this part of Christianity, although it comes from my uh, homeland. But it was always like a, something without any meaning, you know. I, I was never against church. I didn't never mock uh, priests, but I was just uh, feeling uh, uh, sorry for them because there is no God. I mean, they're just wasting their lives. They're just, it's, their profession is in vain. But I said, okay, let's, because I had this very great respect toward this young man, because I felt in him something that I really needed. I couldn't. Uh, distinguished what was that. So he told me, he gave me some books, uh, and I started to pray. And everything changed. The heavens opened. My heavenly mother, I dare to call Jesus Christ even he my heavenly mother, and my heavenly father, and my heavenly bride, and my heavenly friend, and my heavenly everything. He opened the heavens and he came to me. He said, Here I am, waiting for you. I was 29 years old. I'm waiting for you, waiting for you all those years. And I'm, I'm not angry now. Thank God you came to me. So he started to heal my soul. And it was the most beautiful part of my life. I was living in Brooklyn, not in Manhattan anymore. I had this opportunity to have some savings. I didn't have to go to the job, to work. Every day, I could stay in my home, pray during the day. Reading, and during the night, pray, prayer. 
And for a year and a half, I was maybe crying every night. Maybe every night I was, I was, I spent my prayers in, 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 in weeping and crying, being so ashamed where I was, what, what was, what, 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 what I, uh, I was doing in my life, with my life, with my soul. And I was crying of being ashamed of myself in front of this immense personality, this creator, this this personality, this being that, that, that is communic communicating with me. So, um, short in, uh, um, for, still, for some, for some time, I was thinking that it would be great to um, find what was a girl to leave the United States, to go to Greece, because I always loved Greece very much especially Greek islands, to go there to have five or six or seven children. In the meantime, I, used, I, I, I started to learn iconography. To be a iconographer, to have a nice, normal, it doesn't have to be sex bond, it just has to be, have to be a normal person, nice girl, normal, who is of description. And to, 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 to save myself. But then very, very, very soon I have realized that this, this call was too strong. To resist, and I have decided to go to become a monk, to go to the monastery. So I went to um, monastery of Saint Icon of Zadonsk, it's in Pennsylvania. I went there to. Um, I was uh, sent there by, by my first spiritual father. He was his name was Father Macario Rosello. He was Catalonian from Mallorca, and he was member of of, of Russian Orthodox Church. He was a Roman Catholic monk, Capuciner, how they call it, whatever. So he realizes that he misses something in, in, in Roman Catholic theology. And he realized that they are, they are uh, allowed in their monastery to read only Holy Fathers, their Holy Fathers, uh, after the split, after the uh, schism, 11th century. But they were not allowed to read before. And he was saying, why? I mean, it's, aren't we all Christians? No matter if they are Syrians or Greeks or Egyptians or Romans, aren't we all Christians? Why we, why am I not allowed to read Holy Fathers from the uh, early centuries? And his other told him, no, no, it's not, it's not for you, it's not for you. And he said, but for whom is? It's not for you. And he said, okay, but then, and then after all, he said, it's only for, 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 for professors or theology. He said, no, I do not accept this explanation. So he quit, he went to Paris, uh, he, took off, he took off his habit, he went to Paris, he met Russians in, in Orthodox Russian church, he there uh, get uh, tonjured and ordained priest, and he, went, he was sent to uh, OCA, Orthodox Church in America, and he became priest of OCA, Auto Church in America. And that's how we met, because in those times uh, there, there was a war in Yugoslavia, and uh, since I was freshly uh, converted into faith, to my, my beloved Orthodox faith, I was, uh, for me, the most important thing was liturgy, prayer, my own personal repentance, and to be with, per with, with persons, with people, with the same uh, frame of mind. Unfortunately, in Serbian church, also St. Saul's, in, in, in Manhattan, on, 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 on uh, 30 or 40 something, 30 something, I don't remember which street, unfortunately, a lot of politics, a lot of branding, unfortunately. That's who we are. But we can be better. We have to be better. We have to be more pious. So I said, good, it's my people. I'm going to go there for Easter, for Christmas, see them, hug them, kiss them. But I cannot stay here. So I was uh, attending OCA. It was extremely well, nice uh, uh, community. Let's say about 100 or 120 of them. Everybody, Puerto Ricans, Chinese, Croatians, 
Greeks, Serbians, ex-Jews, ex-Protestants, ex-Roman Catholics. People who found Christ and that's it. Manhattan, big crazy house, meth house, America. They were in front of decision, losing their minds, losing their life, losing their health, or to find God. And somehow, with God's help, they found it in Orthodox Church. So it was really beautiful and perfect for myself. Nobody asked me, are you Serbian, are you Albanian, are you coming from Jupiter or from Mars? No. Do you love Jesus? Do you love him? Do you really love him or you're just pretending? And they said, yes, I love him. He's, my, he's, a, he's, my, he's the love of my life. And this is beautiful. And the Fatima Kari and his uh, cousin, uh, brother uh, Daniel Breno, Brazilian, they were cousins. Uh, they were living together. Daniel Breno was a choreographer. Fatima Kari was making uh, uh, um, these frames out of uh, metal with uh, gemstones. So they were a very, very good team. And they told me once, uh, Alza, because my, 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 uh, my civilian name is Alexander, and in Serbian it's short Alza, A-T-S-A. Uh, they told me, Alza, would you like to go to a monastery uh, in, in, in Pennsylvania? We did a lot of artwork there, and there is an altar table. There, there are icons with these metal frames, and it would be good because since you're an artist, and of course I started to do art, and uh, Daniel Breno was my uh, teacher. If you could go there, clean those uh, reasons, uh, as, as Russians call it, and you know to protect. I said, yeah, oh, great, it would be beautiful because I was already thinking about monastic life. I, I said it would be great to spend five or six days in the monastery, in the, you know, for after almost five years in this steel and concrete of, of, of New York to go out, out, out in, 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 in nature. I went there. I was doing my job, but I was more into the uh, everyday church services, into much deeper prayer. And I said to myself, oh, this is, this is something that I need. Because already in New York, it, it was too seldom for me to go once a week. I was burning to go to the church. I was burning to go to the liturgy. In the same way even more, when I was when I, like, like I was burning to go to nightclub before, or to, or to discotheque or something like that. And um, I said to myself, I'm going back to New York, and um, I'm going to uh, ask for a blessing to spend one more, one more month over there to think about it. I went there, and I realized this is the only way for, my, for myself. I left. United States, went to Mount Athos, it's called a mountain, stayed there for a month, realized it's too strong call to go back to Serbia, to my land. I went to Kosovo, spent there 12 years, went through this terrible war, the bullets were falling into the uh, yard of the monastery, hitting the buildings, hitting the, uh, the, the bells, church bells. I uh, faced the uh, universal evil and the West, Western world, who, uh, who has his own way of thinking, way of living, way of uh, arranging the world. Mm, people from the West, they are going to take care, very good care about white whales, white bears, certain uh, species of uh, trees or flowers, but very often they eat people for breakfast. Not all of them, of course. I met beautiful people ex Roman Catholics and ex Jews, whatever. And they were even better Orthodox Christians than we back in Serbia. Because it was 
That's the value. For us, we are kind of spoiled, you know. Oh, I'm Portuguese Christian from my youth. That's about it. But when somebody from West, because Western culture is extremely strong and 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 uh, cultural uh, uh, high quality, with a strong feeling of discipline, uh, the uh, responsibility, and people who is somebody who is raised in this way, when they find orthodoxy. Although they have a lot of problems to reset their lives, their, their past, but when they once go into it, they are extremely strong in it. Uh, so, I went back, spent in Kosovo, a monastery of uh, High Dechani, that's how it's called, Visoki Dechani, Tall Dechani, because it's extremely tall. Oh, of course, for, for, for Serbian conditions it's tall church but for high cathedrals not really and uh, after 12 years after all together staying in 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 in, in uh, St. Nikon, Zodonsky, in Pennsylvania and there all together about 15 years I couldn't resist this call anymore to go to, uh, to, to go to wilderness to, to go to Hermitage to be alone and there I stayed for five years in uh, great struggle with my passions, with demonic powers. I couldn't stay more than five years anymore because I got sick because I'm, you know, soft city boy. It was uh, 1300 uh, uh, altitude meters. So I, I went back to, uh, I went uh, to um, Montenegro. And I was very unhappy because I thought I didn't please God. But then I realized it was God's will to go back to the world and to, to talk to people. Although it was much more... It, the, the, my stay in, 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 in desert was of much higher value for me than this. But I obey. I obey. I obey to the Lord. And I believe and I pray to go back again to solitude. Anyway, I went to, to, to um, a monastery of Ostrog. And as I said, I started to work with people. I started to give uh, presentations all over the world. And uh, there were certain results. And then finally, I came up with idea, not, not the idea, but, but real need to uh, go back to Serbia, to my homeland, because I was, let's say, 30 years out of it. Unfortunately, when I say Kosovo, when I say uh, Montenegro, unfortunately, it's not Serbia anymore. And I said uh, to myself, it's very bad situations, especially spiritually, in Serbia. I have to give a little bit of my power to help. If everybody does little as, they, as, as he can, it's going to be a paradise. So I said, okay, in front of the Lord, I'm not going to say on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the last judgment, well, I could have done more, but I didn't. No, I'm going to give everything for myself. Not more than that, because it would be uh, insane, but whatever I can. And I said to myself, I'm going back to Serbia, I didn't know where. But I knew that I want to have my monastery, that I want, that I want to be an abbot. So it sounds very uh, proud, very, very conceitful. But I must say, uh, in my defense, that uh, from the very first day when I entered a monastic life, from my novitiate, I was reading a lot of holy fathers, especially early fathers, Greek, Syrian, and Egyptian and about the real monasticism, what it really is. Because there are very strict and very concrete rules, like in everything in, in, in life. You know, if you want to be a good soccer player, football player, there are rules. If you want to be a good violin player or, or, or a physician or whatever, there are certain rules. If you go uh, straight at them, you lose the point. You're not going to be good or you're not going to be at all in monasticism. Unfortunately, these days, uh, in many monasteries, we do not live proper way of 
monastic life. And of course, I was drinking from the clear uh, spring from the Holy Mount, Holy, Holy Mount Tatus, said the uh, which is the uh, fortress of monasticism these days, especially, of course, not only Mount Tatus, but Mount Tatus as a as a as a one of the peaks. Uh, some monasteries in the far north of Russia, in Romania. Some of them in Serbia, but not really. So I said to myself, I have this strong desire one day, I don't know when, when God says, to try, to dare to try, to dare to think that I can be a, a leader of a monastic brotherhood, to be a spiritual counselor, for monastics. And I was pretty much pessimistic about it. I, I thought, it's not going to happen to me. I'm, I'm not serious enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not whatever. And I know I'm not good enough for this, but it happened. It happened. I contacted the uh, 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 eparchy of Valio and Bishop Milutin. He said, okay, I'm accepting you, but first of, first of all, you have to finish this with Metropolitan, uh, Metropolis uh, Philokians. I finished this, I went there, and I have received as a great blessing and as a great fear to uh, respond to this call, to this uh, new uh, position, to this new mission. So. Uh, I am thanking God that he uh, gave me this opportunity to have my monastery. Although it's not mine, but I'm there uh, an abbot. And to try to uh, make a new, fresh, strong monastery, let's say, which will be, which is going to, uh, which, which, which will consist of two parts. One part will be a spiritual center a center for spiritual healing and help for lay people. And it's extremely beautiful uh, natural place. Extremely beautiful. Serbia is, it's, it's really, God gave, gave, God gave her everything. Uh, it's uh, like a, how do you say Amphitheater. It's like surrounded with hills. There is a, a little river. It's extremely beautiful. And there is a very special cave, big cave, uh, known for the, those paleologists, with a, with a, with a special a species of uh, special kinds of, uh, of, of bats they live inside. Only there in the whole, in, in the whole world. So it's, it's extremely beautiful. So I plan to, to build there uh, uh, a place for spiritual recoverment for everybody who wants. Of course, uh, there is a, a, a level that I can do it. Of course, I can have there 200 people. But from, you know, uh, and on the, on, 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 on the other hand, uh, I want to make, uh, I want to build, I want to uh, establish a monastery, which is going to be uh, a real monastery, like, uh, let's say, uh, Mount Athos like monastery with walls, with a accommodation house, dormitory, with a church, which is going to be a little bit away from this valley, very, very, very close, because the hills, the hill is right next to the church, so I went to this hill and go uh, up there, there is a, 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 a like a plateau. Um, and there I plan to build a, a, a monastery. Uh, it is all going to be uh, one, 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 one thing. I mean, one, um, this is going to be upper Ribnica and lower Ribnica because the place is called Ribnica. Riba in Serbia means fish, and this river is called Ribnica because there is all fish. It means it's clear, it's clean. So this is my this is my plan. This is my wish. This is my desire to uh, this the, the, the whole uh, complex 
is um, pretty old, pretty um, in bad condition. It was not. It, it was not a monastery for more than one for, for 150 years, because uh, last time when it was a monastery, it was uh, 1837, and uh, since we in those times we were under the uh, Turkish yoke, uh, the Turks were extremely against uh, Orthodox Church, especially against monks and monasteries. Finally, they killed all the monasteries at that time, and uh, the rest of the month dispersed. So from that year until uh, 2011, it was a parish church, uh, not a monastery, and it, it was like a picnic place for the local inhabitants. Then my, my, my predecessor, the predecessor, the predecessor, the other before me, he came there in 2011, he started to work there, Somehow he didn't find a uh, common language with uh, one of the inhabitants, he left, and I came four months ago. And uh, with God's help, I believe I'm not going to go anywhere else, because the last 28 years since I'm a monk, wherever I was, there was a, 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 a whisper in my mind, you're not going to stay, you're not going to stay here, you're going to go away, you're going to continue your, 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 your search. So when I came here, there is no this voice anymore. He told me now you came home, and um, I think I think that's that's a place for my um, repose. Well, of course we all need place to, to die because to die it is very uh, something very important. It's not good to die in some rush in some uh, crazy uh, shuffle. How do you say not shuffle? But how do you say? You say uh, Chaos, let's say, whatever. Uh, it is extremely important to prepare ourselves for dying. Actually, not for dying, but to, to change the world, real world, to change it, to leave this world and to go to the uh, better world uh, in case we deserve it. So I believe it's a place for me to uh, leave my bones and to um, give opportunity to young novices to young people, to, uh, to give them the best conditions uh, in terms uh, of, of my power to become, you know, we have a lot of geniuses today, we have a lot of extremely clever kids, clever young men, but we do not have saints. We have very few saints. And saints are produced in a very, very special ways, uh, conditions of life. 99% in the monasteries. And uh, thinking about myself as a novice and as a young monk, I, I remember how important this period were, was for me and how uh, bad I was feeling and how counterproductive was this for, to me when those conditions were not good enough. I was losing uh, in vain energy which was extremely important for me to acquire Holy Spirit and to fight with my passions. So, with God's help and with help of all the saints, I believe I'll try to make monastery with all those conditions to have, why not? It's too late for me, but why not? To have a, a new saint or at least a good bishop. Because bishops, comes, bishops come from monastic. Uh, uh, way of monastics, and it's not easy to be a good bishop. As a matter of fact, it's, 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 it's extremely heavy, hard, complicated. And if bishop didn't spend certain good number of, of years in the monastery, in the four walls of his cell, in the burning combat with himself, he's Maybe he's not going to be prepared for this fight with the uh, spirit of this world. So I have very sublime, very uh, high plans. Who knows what's going to happen? But I believe if we put high plans, the highest plans, 
and, and goals in front of us. Myself, first, I'm not going to reach it, but I'm going to go towards these high goals. And ho hopefully, for fortunately, I'm going to reach, uh, we, all, all of us, if, if I say, I want to be very pleasing to the Lord. Extremely pleasing, I want to be to the Lord. And I will be, if I say so. If I say, oh, it's not, it's very hard, you know, this time, this, 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 this period of, 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 you know, these years are, it's so hard, we are all weakened, you know, it's not so easy to be, uh, you know, to, to, to be, uh, to have a spiritual feat, then we're going to be like this, lukewarm. So we say, no, I'm not going to be lukewarm. I'm going to be either uh, extremely cold or extremely or extremely hot. Otherwise, God will spill me out of His hands. So, um, uh, after six years of um, my um, uh, lecturing uh, experience, um, of my uh, going all over and giving lectures, I have never asked for help. But now I'm forced and uh, I feel somehow uh, ashamed to ask, but uh, I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for, for my monastery. I'm asking for all those people who are going to come there to find Lord, to find salvation, to leave antidepressants, to leave uh, sedatives, to leave drugs, to leave, to leave uh, uh, bad, bad, bad way of life, to find back their spirits, and to try to make good monks. So um, this is the beginning of my uh, uh, going all over the world. In June I go to, uh, hopefully, it's, it's already uh, um, the Arranged. Uh, I will be there for 18 days from uh, 9th to uh, 25th of June, going from Florida to north, from, from to, to the uh, border of Canada, and to back to back for help. For help. Of course, nobody uh, has to be uh, burdened with the idea of uh, big sums. Like everybody can give a little bit, and uh, it will be big help to, for me. Of course. Um, God, uh, thanks God for internet. This uh, presentation will go uh, all over the world, and I believe that uh, everybody can, uh, whoever can, afford. And I can say for uh, those who can who can uh, donate through uh, PayPal, my um, address is. Arsenie Tarskarimica at gmail.com, which means A R S E N I J E dot R I B N I C A at gmail.com. So I took a lot of time. I uh, I'm grateful for your patience. I hope I didn't uh, make you too tired. Thank you and God bless you.